is what we're assuming. So that's, that's where that equation comes from, if you, so you're not totally in the dark about that. And this comes from an energy balance, okay? So there's no accumulation of energy. You have energy flowing in. You guys, have, have you learned about enthalpy yet? Okay, I never know. Okay, this is basically an enthalpy balance. So there's no accumulation of enthalpy. This is the enthalpy flowing in the inlet stream, right? We've got our heat capacity. This the, the Q times, that's a volumetric flow rate. That's a density, so that's a mass flow rate. So it's like MCP delta T. Have you ever heard that before? Okay. So that's the temperature, sorry, of, um, that's the temperature of the feed stream. That's the temperature leaving. So this first term is the energy coming, enthalpy coming in the inlet stream. The second term we're subtracting is the enthalpy leaving in the exit stream because we're continuously flowing material in and out. This is the energy, I won't probably go over this in any detail, but this is the energy being generated by reaction because it's exothermic reaction. It looks a lot like that, except it also includes the, the enthalpy of reaction. You guys studied, I bet that in freshman chemistry. Okay, so that's the amount of energy generated per unit mass of reaction, let's say. And then this is the heat transfer term, which I'm pretty sure you haven't learned because you haven't taken heat transfer, but this is a term that you have a jacket temperature, it usually has some kind of coolant. This coolant might be water, or if the reaction takes place at a really low temperature and you can't cool it with water, it might be like liquid propylene or ethylene or something like that. But the main point is the jacket, this is called the jacket temperature, <coughs> is a lot less than the temperature of the reactor. So this term is negative. This is a so-called heat transfer coefficient. This is the area for heat transfer, it doesn't matter. But this is a negative term, so you understand you're flowing in energy, you're removing it. Heat's being generated by reaction, but you're removing it with the cooling, okay? All right. So, this is your problem um, you need to solve. So, what I've given you here is a bunch of constants, right? So, to solve this problem, what are we talking about? Well, you want to solve this for the concentration and temperature leaving the reactor. So, that's CA bar and T bar. Those are unknowns, okay? What I've given you is everything else, okay? All the other parameters, we call them, of the model, <coughs> I've given you. So this is the so-called frequency factor of the reaction. That's the activation energy, heat of reaction. You always have a multiplicative term that's, that's density times heat capacity, so I just put them together rather than specify them separately. They're their, that's their value. There's U times A. Again, they only appear in one term, so I multiply them together. That's the heat transfer. There's the gas constant, the appropriate units. There's the volume of my reactor. There's the volumetric flow rate. There's the feed concentration of the reactant, feed temperature, and that's the temperature of the jacket. Okay. And your task is to write a function, right? So you need to write a function that evaluates both these, you need to write an M file, I should say, that evaluates both these functions. So you remember, what MATLAB is going to do is it's going to give you values of CA bar and T bar. It's going to give them an evalu uh, something called X. And your job <coughs> is to cough, no. Your job is to evaluate these functions, okay? So. And I think what you'll find, if you do this correctly, is you'll find there's actually three steady states for this problem. Okay, and I'll explain them to you in a minute. So, let's see how much I want you to struggle. Um, let, me, let me let you at least try to start, rather than just copy. I'll probably help you a little bit more in this because, um, but you want to mimic the example I just gave you. So, it's going to be something like this to get you started. You're gonna write, you're gonna write, you're gonna open up a new M file, right? You're gonna call that M file whatever you want, reactor.m or whatever you choose to call it. It's gonna, the first line of that file is gonna look like this. I have to see that F might, does that F need to be in parentheses? No. Okay, I called it, so you can use the same thing, CSTR. That means continuous stirred tank reactor, which is what this thing is, parenthesis x, okay? So the idea here is MATLAB is going to give you values of x, which is values of the concentration of A and the temperature, and it wants to give you back, it wants you to give it back those two functions, okay? So the first thing you should do when you write this thing is to do the following. <coughs> Start defining these constants, you know, k0 equals something. Activation energy, call it E, equals, the, you know, the value. Put a semicolon here so it doesn't print out. Define all the parameters that I've given you here. Give them names, like K0 and E. And 
You know, I might call the heat of reaction dH. It doesn't matter what you call them, but you have to, you have to define these things, okay? You have to define all those parameters. The reason we define the parameters is because you don't want to substitute those into the equations with numbers. <coughs> because this way, if I tell you change the activation energy, you just change it here and it'll change everywhere else it might appear. If you plug it in the equation and I tell you to change the activation energy, then you've got to look in the equation and find out where you type the actual number and change it there. It's very sloppy. So you don't want to do it that way. Okay? So you define all the parameters. Okay? And then probably, <coughs> once you're done with all that at the end, you want to do the following. You want to say, please define a variable called the concentration of A. That'll be the first component of x, because I'd rather call it the concentration of A than x1. And then the temperature, please call, that's x2. It just makes it easier. Now I can refer to concentration of A and temperature instead of x1 and x2. Okay? So first step, define all, first step is write this function thing here. Second step, define all the parameters. Third step is, for um, simplicity, and convenience, define concentration of A and temperature to be the components x1 and x2, okay? Then you have to write the equations for F1 and F2. Th that's those two functions up there, those guys, okay? So, <laughs> obviously like this one would start with Q, which you've defined over here, times CAF, which you've defined over here, minus <coughs> what I called CA, right? Da, da, da. With a semicolon at the end, so it doesn't print because you don't like it to print. Because it may call this function, you know, 500 times. If you don't put a semicolon, it'll write out the value of that function every time it's called. It'll be really annoying. All right. So what I'm going to let you do is struggle a couple of minutes, and then maybe I'll guide you along a little bit. We'll see. How desperate you look. Yeah? So I just want to double check that the equation where we have a, a CA uh, bar uh -huh. is multiplied from two the exponent of the exponential or is it multiplied from the whole thing? What do you mean? So is it in the exponential or is it with the other stuff in front of the Oh, you're talking here? It's outside the exponential. Oh, okay. Yeah. Exponential is just what's in the parentheses there. Yeah. So it even crashes your machine? MATLAB. Huh. Every time, even WinSolve. I can <coughs> get WinSolve on this one, but the next one I can't. I can't get the determinant on any of them. Jonathan says it sounds like it's a problem where it's not able to solve linear. I purchased this three months ago through the OIP network. Mm -hmm. So I uninstalled it this morning, reinstalled it, and it's still not working. Hmm. It does like the basic, but, and I've contacted MATLAB, I've contacted the woman who is out of her office all whole week. Okay. I spent all Saturday and Sunday on emails with Ashish and Jonathan. So, you know, the real, I have a real expert that might be able to fix this for you in my group. So, um, why don't you send me an email? His name is Aditya. He's a, he probably knows a thousand times more MATLAB than I do, for example. So, if you um, send me an email, then I'll forward your email to him and say connect with her to see if you could help her, and he might be able to help you get it working. Yeah, yeah. Like I've, reinstall I've uninstalled it, reinstalled it, like I've contacted MATLAB, I just, I don't know what's wrong. But he's really good at this kind okay. of thing, so I'm, I can't guarantee, but he's your best chance. Okay. Yeah, so if you just do that, I'll respond this afternoon, and then you can uh, get together with him. I don't know if he's on campus today, because he works half-time in Worcester at a company, but he'll be here within the next day or two. So with the homework that's due tomorrow, you might have to, you know, you're supposed to be working in groups too, if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully... I don't know if we can get it fixed by them. We'll get it fixed, though. Yeah? If you have an issue, bring your issue here, OK? Because I'm kind of tired. So I, I wrote everything out. I was saying I have two input arguments. Mm -hmm. I just changed that. Oh, you, don't, you shouldn't call this C2, because then it thinks C is a vector. Yeah. Call it. Oh, yeah, because I was just doing. Yeah, so what's C1? Is that, that just my is that the feed? Is that the feed concentration? Yeah. We'll call that like CAF then. Don't give it a vector thing because then oh, it, just, yeah, just messing it up. maybe. I feel bad for you guys. Do that. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> it's nothing different than what I said, right? <laughs> this is how I deal with questions, right? Someone comes up with a thoughtful question, I'm just like, sit back down and do this thing here. All right. So <coughs> you can see what I've done here. I don't have my pointer, but I've said function f equals CSTR. I defined all these constants to be, you know, I gave them names. It doesn't matter what you call them. It's just what you'll recognize. I gave them names that I like. You can call them whatever you want, OK? I said concentration of A is x1, concentration, I mean, t temperature is x2. And then I wrote out the two functions, you know, using syntax, MATLAB syntax, obviously. So this is precisely the thing you, kind of thing you've got to do on your homework. <coughs> on the homework, though, you're going to have four equations and four unknowns. It's going to be that thermo problem. You remember that fluid phase equilibrium that I, I was so sure that you knew, and then you like, we've never seen that. But anyway, so it'll be that problem. So, but it'll just be a scaled version of this. Instead of doing everything twice, you'll do, do it four times, right? You'll have four unknowns, you'll have four equations. But you do it the exact same way, OK? You probably want to call it like equilibria or something or whatever. So go, let me give you a second to, to enter this, and then we'll talk about how you use it, OK? And you can imagine the most common error, I'm not sure why f equals f at the bottom. I need to explore that. That seems, <laughs> seems like a, not the most useful command I've ever issued. But, um, and then we'll talk about how to use this. But what I was going to say is that you can imagine in the context of writing this function, if things don't work, the most common problem is you screwed this up, right? The most common problem is you screw up the syntax stuff, like, you know, how you use the uh, function f the first line or how you define these vectors um, that are called c, a, and t or, you know, x1, x2 equivalently or x, f1, f2. So if something goes wrong and you get an error, there's, there's different kind of errors. Some errors are like, I couldn't converge, right? Not a number. Other ones are like, it'll give you the line. You've seen that before? Right? If MATLAB doesn't like, like something you've done, it'll say what function, where it doesn't like it and what the line is. And you can actually click and it'll bring exactly to the line it thinks is the offensive one. Often that's the first offensive one, not the last one. Okay. So you fix that one and then you'll see other ones. But if you use this, this should work. I'm not sure <coughs> about the last line. Um, so my guess is, well, I'll find out. I'm sure at well, some point that was f equals f prime because um, MATLAB wanted it <coughs> as a row vector instead of a column vector, but I'll have to check it out. So it'll take a few minutes to do that. Okay, how are we progressing? Yeah? I'm just trying to see why you divided by two in the first one, and then it's just like gross Uh-huh. I remember you said it before, but why do you modify that F1 to divide by F2? Let me go back and look, sorry. Uh, it's arbitrary. <laughs> I had it for written this way for another reason, for another purpose, but... So all I've done is take both those equations and divide cross by V. It's the same equation, right? If you divide both sides of the equation by a non-zero constant, it's the same thing. It, this was a, it, I shouldn't have probably written it this way, given the way I presented it in, in, the, in the previous slide. 
but it's no different than what I gave you. It's just the equations I gave you divided by v. So, so there's a reason, but it's not easy to explain, and it's not, it's not critical. You could write them without the v, right? You could not divide those terms by v and have the v's the other places where they appeared. You'd be okay. Right, okay. All right. So, <coughs> I'll leave this up for another minute and then I'll start showing you how to use it and then, then I'll come back. Did most people have this thing written? And they're bored or they're less like still writing it? Because obviously if it's not projected, it's going to be hard to write. Okay, so if you don't have this, I'll come back to it. But let's, um, well, maybe I'll leave it up there for a second. So now, the, the hard part is, how do, is using this function. It's not, I mean, writing this function, it's not, it's not how you use it, right? So you should be able to use it just like you used it before. So you should be able to do something like this. Okay, first thing at the command prompt, right, after you've written and saved this function, you should be able to define something called x naught. This is your guess of what the answer is, right? So when you guess an answer, it's the nice thing about guessing an answer for a physically based problem, it's a little easier to guess what a reasonable answer is, right? So if you look at this reactor, <coughs> if you look at, you're trying to calculate the concentration coming out of A, right? You know the concentration going in. The concentration going in is 10. So I bet the concentration coming out is less than 10. Because if it, otherwise it wasn't consumed. There was no reaction. A is the reactant. So you know, one choice might be 10. Right? It's, it's in the ballpark. It's going to be less than 10, but I don't know how much less, so maybe I just guess 10. Okay? All right, what about temperature? <coughs> well, the, um, if you look at the inlet temperature, it's 298 degrees. Okay? So the reaction is exothermic. More than likely, <clears throat> the temperature coming out is greater than the temperature coming in because we don't remove all the heat that was generated by the reaction, but maybe we do. So maybe we guess 298. It's not unreasonable, you know, guesses. All right, so you might guess that. Then you come in here and issue this command. Well, sorry. Right? Just like before. Guess the two answers, issue this command, and see what happens. Has, any, has anyone done that? I guess it's hard to do. I just put it up there a second ago. But. So let me do something here real quick. One thing you learn about MATLAB is often the first experience you get is failure, right? So you see, I actually have an F prime here, not in the notes, but in the actual file. See this, see this last thing here? I'll show you why, at least I'll show you, I think, why in a second, okay? So if we go <coughs> to the notes here, then you can see my guess was pretty similar. I guessed 300 instead of um, instead of 298, but it's still quite close. So x0, because I'm lazy, what, 10 and 
300, is that what I had, I think? And then I issue this. It takes, a, it's why it takes longer now because it's a harder problem to solve, apparently. At least I get this answer. Which, what? You got a different answer than this? I have a theory. You're wrong. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's usually, it's not always the right answer, but, so you might, you might do you get something close to this? I got 10 and 28. 10 and what? Oh, so someone went wrong. It just gave you back your guess. Wasn't that your guess? No, my guess was that. Or I, I, I guess like 1,000, 1,000, maybe 10, 98. Oh, I bet you have an error in that file, the M file. So this is the common thing. So this is why it's critical when you solve a problem that you have some idea what you think the answer will be. OK? Because if you have no idea what the answer should be and you get back an answer, like there's two things that might go wrong. One is, right, you don't know what MATLAB is telling you. So it came back with a couple of numbers and you just accept them. The other thing is you don't have any idea what the answer should be, so when it comes back with any answer, you have no way of scrutinizing it. So if I look at this answer, I know you guys don't know a lot about reaction engineering, but I come back and I say, okay, I fed in 10, I forget what the units were, kilomoles per liter. I don't know what the units of the concentration were. But I started with 10 entering and I came with 8.5 or 8.6 leaving. So you, have you guys ever talked about like yield or conversion in any class that you've ever taken? <clears throat> so that's pretty low yield, right? That's like 14 or 15 percent. That's pretty bad. But it's not impossible. And the temperature went up a little bit at least, right? It went up to 298 to 311. So <clears throat> while that's a pretty, um, not a very desirable solution, maybe it's not unreasonable, okay? So you should be able to get that. Does anyone else get that? You got that? All right. So that's one of the steady states. So that's a steady state I call low conversion, low temperature, OK? I already worked through this, so I don't want to keep guessing. But then I guess this answer. You might say, why did I guess another? Why did I guess again? I got an answer, because I, I think there might be more than one steady state. <clears throat> and I'm just trying to find if that's the case or not, OK? So now I guess this one. Okay, so this is, this is a little bit further away, right? Now I'm assuming half of the A is consumed and the temperature goes up quite a bit more than before. And if you use this as your guess, then you get that answer. And if you look at this, what MATLAB's telling you, I think you can see MATLAB's telling you it worked. It's the same message it said before. It's worked, okay? <coughs> so that's um, a steady state that has moderate conversion and kind of moderate temperature. <coughs> and then if you guess this one, then, then you get this solution, right? So that's a lot more conversion and a lot more increase in temperature. It, may, it makes sense. If you convert more of the A to B, you generate more heat and the temperature goes up. So they go, a goes down while temperature goes up. So there's, the, there's three steady states. Now, <coughs> this, this here is arguably, well, it's certainly one of the classic problems of chemical engineering education. People have used it since the 60s, I think, to illustrate different concepts of reactor design and engineering and dynamics and stability and steady, multiple steady states and things like that. So what you see here, actually, is you, you have three steady states, right? low conversion, medium conversion, and high conversion. Um, and when you guys take the control class, or maybe, I don't think we do it in this class, but when you take the control class, uh, we'll talk more about this problem. And you should also see this problem in kinetics, OK? So that's what you should get. I'll just put this up for another minute. If you, if you don't get that, and I think the prime, let's see what happens if we don't use the prime, by the way. See if it gets mad at us doesn't care, OK? So that tells me this. Just maybe I should just get rid of that. It would be pretty funny if it gave me an error now. No, OK. So that, that it didn't matter if it was returned as F or F prime. I don't even know why I had that there. It's just confusing, so I deleted it. I'll delete it in the notes as well. Um, oh, yeah. So. <coughs> 
If you don't get that, if you're not able to get those answers, you've almost certainly made a mistake here. Okay? Yeah. Uh, what if I can get two of the answers but not the third? You're wrong. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, you mean you could get them, but not with the guesses so that so I? If I emulate two of your guesses, uh -huh. I get the same answer. And then the, for the last guess, the one in the 400, it, it says I've exceeded my max iteration limit. So uh, uh -huh. is the way that you bring it there perhaps easier computationally than just copying the? Uh, Did you write it exactly this way? No, I wrote it. I just like copied over the function from the slide before. But, like, so what's the difference? You didn't divide by the I didn't V. Divide by v. I think oh. something with rows, so you see. That shouldn't matter. Maybe the dividing by V could potentially do it. The other possibility is I'm running an older version of MATLAB, oh. and when they come out with newer versions of MATLAB, you never know what algorithms they might modify. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't improve that one; they degraded it because mine works and yours doesn't. So <laughs> I'm running, I think, 2007 MATLAB or some old version because you don't need a license. It's a long story but um, perfectly legal. So, um, and you guys are probably running the new, you know, like 2014 MATLAB. But I, I don't know, maybe the V, you could try like dividing through by the V. But certainly, you know, it's possible the scaling, V changes the scaling of the, what is the value of V? Isn't V1 for this problem? It yeah. doesn't make no difference then. It can only make a difference if V was different than one, right? So I don't know what the story is there. But I get the moral of the story here is that <coughs> if something goes wrong, you probably have made a mistake in this, okay? And this, the, this is one of the challenges of writing code is that, like even this is pretty simple, right? I think. But you know, if you make a mistake in one number, you'll get the wrong answer. And you know, peop, we write codes that are hundreds and hundreds of lines, so you, you know, you've got to kind of be perfect. I don't know how else to say it. Same thing when you're doing things with pen and paper, right? You, if you make a mistake, you get the wrong answer, so different, yeah. So there's two ways to do it right. So here, you could either say, you could do this if you wanted to. In MATLAB, I'm talking about now. You could have E divided by parentheses R times T. Or you could do E divide by R divide by T. They're the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is probably clearer, to be honest, but it requires extra parentheses. I don't like that. It's a lot of work. All right? All right, so this is what you guys are going to need to do for your homework assignments. You're going to need to write a function like this, and the problem will look very similar to this. If, if you have problems doing <coughs> sorry, the um, homework, it depends on the problem you get. But the first kind of problem you usually get is MATLAB will give you an error, and it'll tell you where it doesn't like something. It'll point directly to one of these lines. And if you click on the link, it'll take you directly to this thing, and it'll, tell you what it, it'll show you what it doesn't like. Okay? So let's say you've avoided all the syntax problems, not giving you errors like your, your line 14 is wrong. Um, then, you know, again, you might get an answer, but if you make a mistake in this equation, like MATLAB will solve it, but it won't give you the right answer if you, like, forget to multiply by CA there or something like that. So if you start getting answers that seem not to make sense to you, like, right, the problem you're going to solve, you're going to solve for four unknowns. They're going to be two mole fractions and two activity coefficients. The mole fractions have to be between 0 and 1. <laughs> okay. So if you start getting answers where the mole fractions are less than 0 or more than 1, you've made a mistake. The activity coefficients generally are somewhere near 1. Okay. Because activity coefficient is a measure of how far you are from ideal liquid behavior. And 1 means you're at ideal liquid behavior. So, you know, they could be in principle 0.1 or 10, but it's not likely. But, you know, if they're negative, that makes no sense, and so on and so forth. And um, real quick, we're going to leave this problem. You guys, I assume, have seen that I had a typo in my notes that is very relevant <coughs> to this problem. And I just want to make sure that everyone... I corrected it, but I just want to point it out so that you don't get confused because it <laughs> exactly related to the homework assignment. And the homework assignment was called MATLAB something. No, not MATLAB. You ever do this where it changes how your files look and you don't know why it's happened? It used to be a list and now it's this. You just, why? Windows. 
bad from the beginning. Okay. So this, let me see if I did fix this thing. Oh, yeah, the problem was over here. If you look at the old version of the notes, I think these were both minus signs and one needed to be a minus and a plus. So the notes have been corrected and the, the statement in the homework is correct. I'm just saying if you happen to download the old version of the notes at some point, you're going to look at the notes and then you're going to look at the homework and they're going to be at odds with each other. Of course, if you were <coughs> industrious and you saw this problem, you would just go into Google and type Wilson equation, hit return, find a website that gives you the equation and you would see what the right equation is, right? Okay. Well, obviously it makes no sense to start anything now, in my opinion. So we got like nine minutes left. We want to keep our tradition of ending early and getting a lot of coffee. So we'll go for that. And um, so, what is t so I will start the lecture on Wednesday. I will probably won't complete it. And then uh, the exam on Thursday. And I'll comment briefly, but I already did, I think, to a large extent. But not cumulative. Okay. <laughs>